So if you watched my video last week, you saw me build out this hero section of this design I've been working on. Now this whole design I came up with was just an exercise to try to get me out of a bit of a creative rut. I feel like I'm always designing the same layouts over and over again, and here by going with something that's completely out of the realm of what I typically design, this kind of brutalist looking layout, I've had to stretch those creative muscles and come up with some outside of the box thinking. Now, because I'm having to design something so different, I'm also having to build out stuff in a way that I don't usually typically work. So in this series, I'm going through and building out this entire page inside Generate Blocks, and now we're to the second section here. If you didn't catch last week's video, that's no problem. You can jump straight into this one without having any context, but if you wanna make sure to catch that first video, I'll make sure to put a link down in the description. Now in today's video, we're gonna be working on this second section here, which has a few cool tricks up its sleeve. If I go ahead and turn our grid lines on, we can see things are generally adhering to the grid. We have this first headline, which spans five or six of the columns. We have our logos over here, which span three of them and kind of have equal space between. And then we can see this grid of content kind of starts on our grid line here and ends on our grid line here, but the content inside of it actually isn't adhering to the same grid. If I would have made this column fit right up against here, it would have been a little bit too tight. And if I would have pushed it all the way over here, I think it would have been a little bit too much space between them. So one of the interesting things about using grid like this for a structured layout is sometimes you just have to know when to break that grid. There's no real hard and fast rules on it. You just have to use your eyes and see what visually balances. But what's gonna be really fun in this video is this extra little pseudo element. In the last video, we just did a small line on top of this content, which was fairly easy to achieve. But in this one, we need to wrap this entire thing and it actually needs to expand over into the next section below it, where it has equal spacing down here and up here. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of math to make all this work. So back into the editor here, I'm just gonna go below this first section that we created and go ahead and add a new section. Now this one is gonna have a dark background, so we'll go into our color palette and just select that darkest color. Now we're gonna be using our 12 column grid again, so I'm gonna to go to this wrapper here and just make sure that we add that same class we used before, which was just grid hyphen 12 call, and that will just set up the grid we need to align everything. All right, the first thing we need is our heading in here. Again, I'm gonna wrap this in a container just in case we ever add something else in this. We can kind of group all this information together and make sure it's spanning the same width. We'll just consult our Figma drawing again, go in here and turn on our grids, and we can see this spans from one, two, three, four, five, all the way over to six. So we can either do a one over six, or we could say that this spans one, two, three, four, five columns. I think the span five works well in this case, so we're just gonna go in here and go under the layout into our grid column, and we'll just type in span five, and that will make sure that this container is spanning five columns worth of width. And now we can just go ahead and add our headline in here, which is gonna be an H2. We'll make sure to set this typography color to white, and we can just paste in this text from Figma. Okay, now that we got that worked out, we can go back in here and see what we're gonna to need to do next. We have this group of logos that's gonna span three columns, and then all of this content on the right. So let's go ahead and start getting that set up. To do that, I think I'm just gonna duplicate this wrapper since it already has our 12 column grid on it. And then I'll just go in and get rid of that container that was holding our heading before. So the first container we need inside of this is for our logos. And like I said, it spans three columns. So I'm just gonna type in span three here. Now we can see this is spanning three columns wide. Inside of that, we're gonna have our six different logos. Each of those I wanna have wrapped in a figure tag. So we'll go ahead and add a container in here go into our settings and change this tag name from a div to a figure. And then we can add our image inside of it. So I'll just search for the image block and we'll go into our media library and just grab our first image from here and get it on the page. Now by default images come with a little bit of bottom margin to it, but you can get rid of that if you just go in here to layout and change this display to block or flex or whatever makes sense in your situation. Block is gonna be fine in this case. Now we got our first logo in here, but I need to duplicate this several times to get all six. So I'll just duplicate this one, two, three, four, five more times. And then we can go in here and replace all these images. So we had the generate press one, now we'll grab generate blocks. And I'll just fast forward through this part so you don't have to watch me add all these images. All right, so we got all of our images in there, but this wrapper that's holding all of these images is just set to a display of blocks. So they're all just stacking on top of each other. 
We want these to all go side by side and they don't actually adhere to our grid in here. Plus we wanna be flexible and have it set up to where if we ever wanted five logos or seven logos, everything would still work. So I think this is actually gonna work better with Flexbox. We'll go into the display and change this to flex, which will put them all next to each other. And then we can just set this justify content to space between to make sure it evenly spaces out all those logos and just fills in those three columns. Now the heading wrapper and the wrapper around these logos are obviously too tight. We can control that here at our section that we've already set to flex. And we'll go in here and just add some row gap, maybe 80 pixels just to match what we did in the section above it. And I think that's a good starting place. Now we need to add our container that's gonna hold all of our cards of content. So let's see exactly how that's set up. If we count our grids again, we have one, two, three, four, five. So we know this content's gonna start on the fifth column here, and it's gonna span all the way to the next to last one, which I know is 12. So we can span this from five to 12. So back into the editor, we'll go ahead and go inside of our wrapper, and we'll add another container here that we can set to span the grid columns five over 12, which is just gonna put this exactly where we want it inside of our container. Now inside of that, we have six different cards of information. It's just easy to call them a card, even though it doesn't look like a traditional card. It is a group of content here. So I'll go ahead and add our first card in here. And inside of it, we know we want a heading that we're gonna set to an H3. And this first one is gonna be strategy. Of course, we can't see it on the screen. So let's go ahead and change that text color to white. And then underneath it, we need some text. I'll go ahead and add in a text block and we'll paste in that content from Figma. And of course, we can't see that very well on the screen either. Now, all the text inside this section is gonna be our light beige color. So it makes more sense to go ahead and set that text color on the section so everything will inherit it. My headings automatically get overridden, but if I go in here and change this text to the light beige color, you can see it changed it here on this text that we already added since it's being inherited from its parent, which is this section. Now in my design, this heading didn't actually look like our heading style. So I'm gonna use that P large class that's set up inside my theme like we did on the last one, which is just gonna make this look more like our body font, but slightly taller. Now you can see it has some bottom margin by default. So we'll go inside the spacing here. We're gonna just change that bottom margin to maybe four just to give it a little bit of space. And then we wanna make sure to get rid of any extra margin on this paragraph as well. So we'll go into our spacing and set that to zero. Now all we need to do is grab this container that's wrapping our card and we just need to duplicate it five more times since we have a total of six cards. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five. And now we can decide exactly how we wanna lay this out. If we remember back to our drawing, this is a section where the content inside of it doesn't actually adhere to our grid that we set up. Like I said before, it would be too tight if it was all the way over here and too loose if it was all the way over here. So we're just using our intuition here to kind of break the grid and make sure everything looks visually balanced. So to do that, I think all we need to do is set up a pretty simple two column grid. So back into the editor, we'll go to this container that's holding all of our cards. We'll change this to a display of grid. We'll go into our grid template columns and just set up a two column grid. And then we can add maybe 60 pixels of both column and row gap just to space those out. Now I do need to replace all this content, so I'll go ahead and do that quickly and then we'll jump back in. All right, now we got all that content in here and the section is really coming together. We just need to think about how this is gonna work responsively. And of course we need to get our pseudo element in there. But let's go ahead and save those changes and refresh everything on the front end and take a look. Now this is looking pretty good, but let's see what happens when we get down to tablet. We know that generate press automatically breaks to our tablet breakpoint at 1024 pixels. And I think at that, it actually still looks pretty good. These logos are starting to get a little cramped, but I could probably live with this layout. But the tablet layout doesn't just exist at 1024. It spans all the way from 769 to 1024. And here at 769, which is still our tablet layout, this layout looks a little bit broken. Obviously our logos are way too close to one another and these cards are starting to look a little bit cramped as well. Now I didn't do a drawing for tablet and mobile, so we're gonna have to do this on the fly. And my first thought is to maybe just vertically stack all these logos on the left-hand side, make their column a little bit more narrow and we can give these cards a little bit more room. So let's test that out and see how it works. We'll go back in here into our container that's holding all of our logos and we'll make sure we're set here at the tablet breakpoint. Now, right now this is set to flex and it's set to row. I think all we would need to do here is change this to column, which is gonna vertically stack them. That looks good. And then we can go into our alignment and justify this to the top. 
I don't want these to span the entire height here, but we do need a little bit of space in between them. So we can go back to our row gap here and do maybe something like 16 pixels, which just spaces them out nicely. Now we still have too big of a gap in between here. So let's go back to that container. Right now it's spanning three of our columns wide. So let's go in here and tighten that up a little bit. Maybe instead of span three, we just do span two. Now we have an extra column to work with. So we can go to the wrapper around all of our cards. Instead of five over 12, we can change this to maybe four over 12, just to give it a little bit more space. And I think this looks a little bit more balanced. Now our headline up here is a little bit too scrunched. So we'll grab that container as well. Right now it's set to span five of our columns, but maybe if we did something like span 10, that would give it just a little bit more breathing room and make it fill in that space a little bit better. We'll go ahead and save those changes and refresh on the front end. And here at our smallest point of the breakpoint for tablet, I think everything looks good. And as we go all the way up to where it's gonna go back to desktop, I think everything looks nice. So let's see what happens on mobile. As we get down to our mobile breakpoint here, I think all of these cards need to go to a single column because there's just not enough room for them. And that's easy enough to do. If we go back to this grid and go to our mobile breakpoint, all we need to do is change this grid template columns from the two columns it's inheriting right now down to one column wide. And that's just gonna make sure to stack everything on top of each other. We'll go ahead and save those changes, refresh on the front end. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good for our mobile layout. So I'd say we're good on tablet, mobile, and desktop. The only thing we have left to do here is our pseudo element that kind of wraps all these cards. So let's hop back into Figma and see exactly how this is gonna work. Now, if we look at this section here, you can see there's more padding at the top of this section than there is from the bottom of this content to the bottom here. On the last section we built out, we actually moved this pseudo element 30 pixels up from the text. So I think maybe we just continue that, even though it's not gonna be exactly like this drawing, I think for consistency's sake, we move this pseudo element 30 pixels off the top of this text. That means we could move it 30 pixels over to the left as well. And then at the bottom, I'm thinking we have 30 pixels in between the bottom of the text and the bottom of our section, and then another 30 pixels from the bottom of the section to the bottom of our pseudo element. So we're gonna have to change this padding on the section, and then we can set our pseudo element up to move 30 pixels up, 30 pixels to the left, and then 60 pixels to the bottom. That way it spans the 30 pixels inside of its section plus 30 pixels outside of its section. If that doesn't quite make sense, then I think you'll see how it works once we jump in here. We'll go ahead and go back into the editor now and make sure we're set at our desktop breakpoint. So we're gonna be working with this grid of cards here. And since we're gonna be using a pseudo element that's gonna be absolutely positioned, we need to make sure to set this position to relative. We'll go ahead and do that. And before we create our pseudo element, if we remember this section needs to have only 30 pixels of padding at the bottom. So we'll go back into our spacing. Right now it's getting its spacing from my class, which has a variable in it, but we're gonna just change this to 30 pixels just to tighten up that padding at the bottom of this section. Now we can go back to our grid and add a before pseudo element. So we'll go in here and click on before and hit create. And just like we did before, we're gonna put two quote marks inside the content just to give us blank content. Right now it's taking up some space, but if we go in here and position this absolutely, it will go out of the flow of content, which is perfect. Now, before we set this up to be 100 VW wide and then one pixel tall and actually filled it in, but in this case, we need to draw a border around this. So I think the border is gonna make more sense. We'll go in here to our border and change this to one, and then we'll change this to our dark beige color. Now you might not be able to see it, but we're actually getting a little dot up here exactly where our pseudo element is started. It's just one pixel dot inside there. To go ahead and get it to span the way we want to, I'm gonna go up here to our sizing. And again, I'm gonna change this to 100 VW. This is gonna make it bigger than the section itself, but it's gonna give us the ability to know that it's always gonna span the entire width no matter what. Again, that's gonna create these overflow issues, but we'll go back and fix that here in a second. But let's go back down here to our inset values where we can set that negative 30 pixels from the top, negative 30 pixels from the left, and then negative 60 pixels from the bottom, which is just gonna allow it to overflow this section. Now we're gonna run out of room here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a blank section at the bottom of our page, just so we make sure we can see this little overlapping effect. 
And we can see now that we don't have that pseudo element selected, it's 30 pixels off the top and the left. And now we have that 30 pixel gap in between our section and 30 pixels worth of overlap here, which is exactly the look we were going for. Of course, we're still dealing with that overflow issue. So let's go back to our section here. And just like we did before, we'll go into position and change that X overflow to clip, which will just get rid of that overflow issue. So let's go ahead and save these changes we made and go test everything out on the front end. Here on our desktop version, we can see our pseudo element is going all the way off the screen and it's perfectly positioned around this grid of cards and overflowing our section just like we wanted to. Now let's see what happens once we get down to our tablet breakpoint. Still looks great here. I don't think we need to make any changes to our pseudo element. And once we get down to our mobile version, I'll tighten it up even a bit more. We still have plenty of room in between the logos and our groups of cards. And the pseudo element still looks really positioned nicely. So I think we can leave that just as it is. And it's amazing what a little border like this will do. Here, this section looks nice and complete, and it has a little bit of visual interest because it's overlapping into the next section. This is one of those elements that really punches above its weight. Without this border on here, this section looks fine, but it doesn't look very visually interesting. But as soon as we add that border into it and the way it's overlapping the sections, it's just a little simple tweak that makes a huge difference in the completeness of this design. And it's a motif we can kind of carry out throughout this site. We saw it here, now we're seeing it again here. And if we look in our Figma file, we're gonna carry out this motif here in the next section. We have another one in this CTA section that's gonna overlap again. And if we get down here to our FAQ section, we can see these little boxes poking out here to the left and right. So it's such a simple little design tweak you can add to your site, but it makes a huge difference in making everything really cohesive. Now, I think we're gonna go ahead and call this a video here, but I wanted to give you a little preview of what we'd be doing in the next video. This next section does adhere to our grid really similarly to the way it did before, but here with the way we need to nest some of these containers inside here, we're not gonna be able to use subgrid to get each one of these elements perfectly aligned on the grid. So we're gonna to have to use another technique that I don't think I've ever shown on this channel. It's gonna be an interesting little lesson, so I hope that you'll subscribe so you can be there as soon as that next video drops. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up or a comment on this video as it helps out quite a bit. And make sure you're subscribed so we can catch you on the next one. We'll talk to you then.